Hey Sanctuary and welcome to our online service. My name is Tara Hollingsworth and I want to take a quick second to welcome all of you to our online service today. If you're new here to Sanctuary, we especially want to welcome you and say thank you for coming. No matter how you heard about us, we're so glad that you guys have chosen to join us today. So if you're comfortable, um, why don't you just go ahead and put an emoji in the comments. Our members are already there waiting to congratulate you. So if you want to go ahead and tell us how you heard about Sanctuary or what brought you here, we would love to hear about it. And also, we have a welcome form that you can be a part of. So if you just want to click that link, it'll take you to a form where we can know a little bit more about you. And also, at the bottom of that form, there's a few Northside organizations that we're in partnership with. We want to invite you to click one of those and say, Sanctuary will give a $5 donation on your behalf. So again, welcome, and we are so glad that you're here. Also, for the rest of our Sanctuary members that have been around for a little bit while longer, of course, we're excited to see you guys as well. We do have a few announcements before we kick off this service today, and the first one is that life groups are starting soon. So maybe you've read a book during quarantine that you really enjoyed, or you have a, a specific topic that you're especially passionate about, we want to invite you to consider being a life group leader. What you can do is you can email Pastor Rose at rose at sanctuarycove.org and tell her about the life group idea that you have and we would love to have you. Also, another incredible thing we have kicking off is this Monday, which is tomorrow, we have our Mosaic small groups kicking off. So what you can do is you can be on the lookout for a small group link and you can sign up one of your students for our Mosaic small groups. If for some reason you don't know how to get in contact with me, you can go ahead and shoot me an email at tara at sanctuarycove.org and I would love to tell you more about small groups. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and get into our scripture foundation for today. So if, you're have, if you do have your Bible with you, I want to invite you to go ahead and grab that and let's jump into our scripture today. Our verse comes from um, Acts 11 and we're going to read verses 1 through 18. So let's read that together. Acts 11, starting at verse 1, says this. The apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, You went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into, I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles and birds. Then I heard a voice telling me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, surely not, Lord, nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Peter, for Simon, who was called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. Sanctuary, let's pray. God, we just take a moment to acknowledge you and to acknowledge your Holy Spirit. We are so grateful for the ways that you continuously lead and guide us, and we, um, we're just so dependent on that. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would make your way known, that you would illuminate the path that you have for us. God, that the meditations of our heart, Lord, would be pleasing to you. God, I ask that in this service, Lord, that your message would be made known, Lord God, that it would fall on fertile soil, that it would produce a good harvest, Lord, be with our pastor as he speaks your word today. God, and I pray that it would produce fruit, Lord. 
We thank you and we love you and we look forward to what it is that you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me?
he paid the price for our lives so that we can have it more abundantly hallelujah so we just want to just worship him with everything that we have because he is worthy to be praised hallelujah service we're going to continue on in worship through giving 
Here at Sanctuary, we truly value giving, and because of your guys' generosity, we have been able to see God move in incredible ways and have been able to be such a blessing in this community. So uh, we just want to continue to encourage you to be a part of what God is doing right here in North Minneapolis. So here at Sanctuary, there are four ways to give. The first way is you can give through text. You can also give on our website at sanctuarycov.org slash give. You can give through the mail, and then lastly, you can give through our Church Center app. So let's pray together and bless our offering. God, I ask that you would be pleased with our sacrifice, God, but even more than that, be pleased with the posture of our hearts today. God, I ask that you would just continue to multiply this ministry, God, and, and the plans that you have for this community. God, we are humbled that you would allow us to be a part of it. So God, I just ask that your presence would be tangible throughout the rest of this service um, and that our eyes would most importantly be fixed on you. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Pastor Rose. I serve as Associate Pastor of Formation here at Sanctuary, and I've served here for 10 years. Back in 2010, I was living in California and received a call from Sanctuary Covenant Church to begin um, in the role of Director of Royal Hood Children and Family Ministry and served in that role for nine years and it was an incredible time of ministry to be in a portable church setting and to build up the ministry of our our children's ministry in that time in that season of our church story and i saw many iterations of royal hood of family ministry of it growing and deepening and ultimately really developing into what our vision is now for family ministry which is to build lifelong faith so it's been an incredible journey of nine years of ministry with our children and in the past year in an interim time i'm searching praying and discerning who that next director would be. Over the last six months, our search team has been interviewing and accepting applications from folks around the country. People who have extensive experience, passion in the area of ministry, of children's ministry. And so we are so excited uh, to narrow it down and for our search team, our pastoral team, and our elder board to unanimously call Shayla Weatherby to this role of Director of Royal Hood Children and Family Ministry. Hi, I'm Shayla Weatherby and I grew up in Washington State in the Seattle area. We, my husband and I went to college in the Bay Area, we lived in Boston and Chicago, and then we moved to Minnesota in 2011. We've been in sanctuary ever since. We will have been married 15 years in September three kids, Lyndon, Leighton, and Lillian. Lyndon is nine, Leighton is seven, and Lillian is five. I've served in Royal Hood from the nursery all the way up to the fourth and fifth grade classroom, and it's just been a joy because I love getting to know all of our kids at church um, and loving on them. things. I feel excited. I feel anxious. I feel nervous. Um, but I'm also surrendered. I think that's kind of been the recurring word that God's given me is just surrender. And I think it's a good place to be because I know that none of this is possible in a pandemic, not in a pandemic, without God. And so I just know that as a team, if we're surrendered and dependent on Him and working together, that we can make it happen. And we just have to be reimagine everything. So I think that's part of the part that's nerve-wracking and makes me nervous, but it's also exciting because we get to create something completely new that we haven't done before. So I still intend to teach, and I intend to step into this role, um, but I think it's gonna be a lot of through example. You know, it's like training our volunteers on how to teach and having an agenda. And, like having creative brainstorm sessions with them. But you know, so it'll look very different, I think, than what it has looked like. But I think it will be new yeah, and exciting and fun. Because I'll still be doing what I love and I'll like get to help other people. 
step into teaching our kids.
Hey there, Sanctuary family. Thank you all so much for uh, being with us today. My name is Edrin, lead pastor here at the Sanctuary Covenant Church. And I just want to take a moment and thank you so much for uh, joining us today, for allowing us the privilege of being a part of your week. And so whether you're watching this on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, or some point later in the week, or maybe you come across this uh, way down the road, uh, we just want to let you know that we're grateful that we get to be a part of your life and that we get to be a part of what God is doing in your life. Uh, we have been here at the sanctuary um, over the last 14 weeks now, walking through the book of Acts uh, in a series that we're calling This Is Us. Um, in this series, our hope is to look at the life of the early church and the work of the Holy Spirit in the church, um, seeking, seeking what we might find about who we are called to be as the people of God. Um, this morning as we get started, uh, today as we get started, I just want to take a moment and uh, offer prayer for us as a congregation, for us as a community, and for us as a nation um, and a, a world. Um, we are in the midst of many, many trying times, and, and I pray that today's service, uh, the songs that have been sung already, the, the reading of God's word, the prayers, and this message will be an encouragement to you as we continue forward together. So let's just take a moment right now and pray and ask God's presence with us as we continue in worship. Lord God, thank you for this time to be together Thank you for your love, which covers us. Thank you for the ways in which you pursue us, God, helping us to know that you are real, that you are alive and well, and that you desire to dwell in relationship with your people. God, I pray right now for every brother and sister who is watching this video, those who will come across it uh, at some point in the future. I pray, God, that you would use this to bless them that it might offer some hope, some encouragement, some direction at a time when we need it, God. There are so many things right now in our world that seem broken or upside down, but Lord, we look to you for hope and direction. And we pray, God, that you would allow this service, this message, the things that take place today to be a blessing to those who, who need it the most. So God, would you uh, use me in this moment you use the, the preparation that has already gone into this moment, but ultimately, Lord, I yield to your spirit's leading. And so, God, if there are things that you desire to say to your people, I, I say yes to that right now. Lord, help us to hear from you clearly in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I just really feel uh, led in this moment just to remind you, all of you, whoever you are, wherever you are, that as children of God, you are and your life is more than just your circumstance. Your lives are more than just your circumstances. That you are always, always a part of a larger, more beautiful story. And when I say always, I do mean always that even in the midst of a global pandemic, even in the midst of the racial strife that we are experiencing as a nation, even in the midst of the trials and tribulations that come your way, your life is always more than your circumstance. That at all times you are a part of a bigger, more beautiful story that God is writing. And so my care for you today as your pastor is to, in the midst of all the trying times that we are experiencing right now, to take a moment and help lift your eyes beyond your circumstance so that you might be reminded and might be able to see that God is writing a bigger, more beautiful story. This is not an attempt to get you to forget what's happening in the world, but this is an attempt to say that your circumstances do not have full control over your life. You are a part of a bigger, more beautiful story. So even in the midst of what we are experiencing as a nation and as a world, God is calling out to you today. And so I say that to those of you who may be having a really hard time, those of you who may be wondering why in the midst of a pandemic we are not perhaps in a different kind of series. I, I, I lift this up to you today because it's important to know that the mission of God and the work of the church do not take a break. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God is calling the church, and especially in the midst of a pandemic, God is calling the church to be the church. 
So today I want to encourage those of you who are struggling, those of you who are having a hard time focusing on anything beyond your struggles, to see that God is writing a bigger, beautiful story, and you are a part of that story. And so because that is true, I want to invite you to join me in Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11, as we look at the text that was read earlier. And in our text this, for this week, we press forward. We continue in the journey that we've been on for the last 14 weeks as we see the good news of Jesus Christ making its way outward from Jerusalem, outward beyond Judea and Samaria, outward towards the ends of the earth. I want you to get that mental picture of of Jerusalem. Perhaps you know Minneapolis well. Jerusalem perhaps might be your Minneapolis. It's the city. It's the urban core. It's the place where many, many, many people come from other places to be. But the gospel moves beyond Minneapolis. It moves out into the second and third and fourth ring suburbs, and it begins to impact other people out there. But it does not stop. It keeps going. It goes out into greater Minnesota. I, I, I spent some time in greater Minnesota last week with my family. And Lord Jesus, it is a special place out there. Very interesting signs, yard signs, particularly at this time of year as we head towards uh, November 4th. But, but greater Minnesota is a place where the message in, in this analogy moves beyond Jerusalem, beyond Judea to the very ends of the earth. Can you see that mental picture of the good news that Jesus is the Son of God moving beyond the city, out to other places, on towards the ends of the earth? That's what happens in the book of Acts, the testimony that testimony that says that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is the promised Messiah, that Jesus is the one who brought salvation to the world. Jesus, this testimony was a gift. It was a a gift to a world that desperately needed it. And this great gift, this testimony that says that Jesus was the Son of God, this testimony was a treasure. It was good, good news, and it could no longer be confined to one group of people or to one place. And in fact, brothers and sisters, the book of Acts reminds us that the good news of who Jesus was and what Jesus had done on our behalf was never, ever intended to be confined to one people group or to one place place. We see this stated clearly in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It is the central message of this entire book and it says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And we've seen this passage play out time and time again in our text. And we find ourselves today here in chapter 10 and 11 at a crucial turning point in the life of the church. I, I want to take a moment and just say for context that chapters 10 and 11 actually mirror each other. They, they retell the very same story. They, they tell the story twice in, in chapter 10 and in chapter 11. In chapter 10, The writer of this book, Luke, tells the story in a narrative way of that critical moment when the Gentiles, those who had not been born into Jewish lineage, they hear the gospel message that they believe, they receive the Holy Spirit, they are baptized, and that confirms that the Gentiles, too, were included in God's gracious work of salvation. And then we see, again, in chapter 11, This brother, Peter, who had taken the gospel now to the Gentiles, we see Peter, he finds himself in in a little bit of trouble. It's as if Peter has been called uh, into his manager's office at at the corporate office, if you will, and the word has reached his manager that says Peter has been hanging out with the Gentiles. Those Gentiles who they believe were unclean, those Gentiles who they believe were not able to be saved, the word had gotten back to the folks there in Jerusalem that Peter was actually hanging out with Gentiles. 
And so this entire chapter 11 that we're going to walk through today, it tells the story of Peter actually explaining to the other Jews, here's what happened when I spent the time with those Gentiles. Here's why I did it. And here's why I believe my actions are not deplorable, but my actions are actually in step with the work of the Spirit of God. And so in this chapter 11 of the book of Acts, we actually walk together through Peter's explanation as Peter tries to make his case. And as we walk through Peter's explanation, I want to invite us today as a church sanctuary, I want to invite us to see a few things that happen in the life of a church just like ours as the Spirit moves the church outward. As we look at Peter's explanation of his actions, I I want us to consider together three things that happens as the Spirit of God moves the church outward. A a friend of mine pastors a church here in the Twin Cities, and and he's been preaching the last several weeks in a a t-shirt that says, the church has left the building. The church has left the building. And and I want to encourage us along the same line, Sanctuary, to think about here's what happens when the church moves outward, when the Spirit of God calls us beyond our services in the building, beyond the life that we knew pre-COVID, as the Spirit moves us outward, I want us to look together and consider three things that the Spirit of God does. So here's my first point today. If you're taking notes, and I've promised the folks here at at, at the church that this is going to be a very Lutheran message, so it's going to be a shorter one. Um, But as the Spirit of God moves the church outward, the first thing that we see in Acts chapter 11 is that people are changed, and so are we. As the Spirit of God moves the church outward, The church has left the building. If that's true, here's something that we'll see as we move outward. The first thing we'll see is that people are changed, and so are we. People are changed, and so are we. You see, there is an acknowledgement that has to happen. I want to confess something that sometimes... When we go missionally into the world, when we go to carry the gospel, when we go on mission, sometimes we enter spaces as if we were the hero. We, we, we have this, pers- this perspective that says, I have something you need. I'm going to show up and save your life. We are heroes in our own eyes. But the reality is that as we go, as the Spirit moves us outward sanctuary, People are changed, yes, but so are we. So are we. When we look at Acts chapter 11, we see two things happening. Yes, we see the conversion of a man named Cornelius, who we'll hear about in just a moment. But we also see the convincing of the Jews. That's what we see in Acts chapter 11 there at the very beginning. We see the conversion of Cornelius And we see the convincing of the Jews. You see, Cornelius needs to be saved. Here's how he's introduced to us in Acts chapter 10 to begin with. The text says, Acts chapter 10, beginning with verse 1, At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. This brother Cornelius is a centurion. He is a commander in the Roman military. He he lived in a place called Caesarea, which was a a city and a people that the Jews hated and despised at the time. Verse 2 says that this brother Cornelius, though he was living in a place that was despised, though he had a, a military background which would have made him hated by many of the Jews, the text says in verse 2 of chapter 10 that he and his family were actually held in a positive life. They were devout. They were God-fearing. That, that phrase, God-fearing, is often used to describe someone who is not a Jew, 
but who from time to time attends the synagogue or often honors Jewish law or, or customs, but they had not been incorporated into Jewish culture, often through circumcision. And so Cornelius was actually a pretty decent dude. And when you look at his life, you wonder, did he really need to be saved? And our answer for us today is that absolutely Cornelius still needed to be saved. Yes, he was a positive person. Yes, he had some some pious activity. He, He gave generously to the poor and he prayed regularly. But this text is a reminder that though he was a good man, he was not yet a saved man. Cornelius is described as someone who was close to the kingdom, but not yet a part of the kingdom. So Peter is sent by God to save Cornelius, to to give a message of salvation to Cornelius and remind Cornelius that although he was doing some godly things, he still needed to be connected to God through Jesus Christ. And so when we look at Acts chapter 10, in the beginning of Acts chapter 11, we see there is a conversion of Cornelius. But that's not the only thing that we see. We see also the convincing of the Jews. The Jews had a very small view of who could receive God's salvation. Let's look at Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Here's what it says. The apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. You see the Jews, the leaders there in Jerusalem, heard what Peter was doing, that Peter was out in the field and he was hanging out with unclean people according to their standards. What's clear in our text is that the Jews had a very small view of who could be included in God's salvation. They had a very small view of who could be clean and what it meant to be clean and unclean, a very small view of what it meant to be appropriate or inappropriate. They had a very small view of what was appealing and what was repulsive. They had a very small view of what it meant to be desired or despised. And the reminder for us today, Sanctuary, is that we too often need to be convinced that God's love is much bigger than our small views of God's love. So while Cornelius needed to be converted, these Jews needed to be convinced. And it's a reminder for us today that as we go out, as the Spirit pushes us out into the world, we're not going as heroes. We're we're not going as Captain America or one of the Avengers. We are going out and we are, yes, joining with God to change people, but we are also being changed in the process. As the Spirit moves the church outward, the first thing we see is that people are changed and so are we. People are changed and so are we. The second thing we see as the Spirit moves the church outward is that we get a bigger, broader view of God's love. It just reminded us that the Jews had a very small view of God's salvation. They had a very restricted understanding of who the good news was for. But as the Spirit pushed them out of their comfort zone, pushed them out of Jerusalem, pushed them beyond Judea and Samaria, as the Spirit pushed them out there, their understanding of who God's love was for grew in real ways. We see in Acts chapter 11, God uses Peter to broaden the perspective of the religious people back in Jerusalem. But first, before God can use Peter in that way, God has to even open Peter's eyes. Let's let's look at Acts chapter 10, verses 34 and 35. At that moment, when Peter's eyes are opened and he gets a much bigger view of God's love. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, here's what it says. Then Peter began to speak and said, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him And does what is right. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Peter has this moment where he begins to realize that that, that the understanding and the tradition he had inherited from his Jewish background had not served him well. And then we see there in Acts chapter 11 
Knowing what he now knows, Peter goes back to Jerusalem and begins to teach his people, the people who often were teaching him at times, he teaches them a much broader understanding of God's love. And here's here's what I want to suggest to us, Sanctuary, that there will be a moment in our life as followers of Jesus where we're actually going to be surprised who received God's love. I I often say that there's going to be a period, perhaps uh, when we get in eternity at the orientation session or whatever it is at that time, uh, where we're actually going to be seeing some people in heaven that we are surprised actually made it there. You're going to be looking around, testing out your wings, how they feel, and you're going to see some folks walk by and you're like, they made it in? You mean God granted eternal life to them? Those people who did that, the good news is, even if it makes us comfortable, uncomfortable, the good news is that God's love is far greater than we have capacity to understand. And there will be some folks who will receive the grace of God who absolutely don't deserve it, in my opinion, but my opinion is secondary to God's opinion. What we see in our text today is that as the Holy Spirit pushes Peter and the other Jews out of their comfort zone, they get a much bigger view of God's love. In sanctuary, I want to pray that same prayer for us, that as God moves us beyond our comfort zone, that God's love reaches people that we might not even believe deserve it. My last point today is this. As the Spirit moves the church outward, as we get beyond our comfort zone, as we get beyond doing what we understand and know to do, as the Spirit moves us to this next place, something happens, strangers become friends, and friends will become family. As the Spirit of God moves us beyond our comfort zone from where we are to where God would have us to be. As we trust the Holy Spirit's leading to press us outward towards the people who need to hear God's love, what we'll see is that strangers become friends and friends will become family. Here's the reality sanctuary as we wrap up our time this morning. Through the works of the Spirit and the mission of the church, God is building one great, big, beautiful family. When the Spirit moves in the world and when the church is operating as God has called it to operate, we see that God is actually busy at work building one great, big, beautiful family. It is a family that includes the Jews, yes, but also includes the Gentiles. A a family that includes you and me, but also includes some folks that we don't think deserve to be there. It's a global family. It's a multi-ethnic, multicultural family. It is a multi-generational family. It is a family that is multifaceted. And brothers and sisters, if we are trusting in the work of the Spirit, we will see strangers become friends and friends friends become family, and God is the one who is building that family, moving us from outsiders to insiders and from enemies of God to friends of God. That's what Acts chapter 11 teaches us today, that our our preconceived notions about who fits within God's family are far too small. They are far too small. And as we trust the Spirit's leading and the Spirit moves us out, we'll see folks who we don't think deserve to be included in the family get invited to the reunion. It takes all kind to have a family. You need that uncle who thinks he's funny but actually embarrasses everybody. You need that aunt who who thinks she can cook but can't really cook. You need that cousin who is inconsistent. You need that that other cousin who who borrows money and doesn't pay it back. It takes all kind to make a family. And the good news is that God is calling us together as a family. And he had to teach Peter that. And he had to teach the Jews that. And my hope is that he's teaching sanctuary that, that it will take all kind for us to represent the kingdom of God. 
And so today as we wrap up our service, I, I want to pray that God will continue to build us and grow us as a family. And then we're going to go into a song that just reminds us the good news of the gospel is that we have been called friends of God. That we are no longer enemies of God. We have been called God's friend. Let's take a moment and pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you have called us from north and south and east and west to sit at your table and dine. God, you have prepared a place for us so that we might be more than we were apart from you, that we might, God, experience your fullness and your goodness. And so, God, my, my, my heart today flows and, and goes out to the brother or sister who has spent their entire life in church but has never known the love of God, who's never felt like a friend of God, who's never felt included in God's family. I pray, God, in this season that you would open their hearts, that you would use this moment to draw them into your family. God, I pray for those who are clearly identified in your family, those who have been walking with you for a long time. God, I pray that you would do the next thing in their life, which is to get them in the spirit of inviting others into the family. Father, we love you. And the good news of who you are is far too grand for us to hold it to ourselves. So God, open doors for us to share your good news with others open doors for us to live before the watching world in, a, in such a way that they would want to know who is this Lord that we serve. And Father, as your spirit continues to push us outward, would you remind us of all you're doing in our life? God, grant us your courage to follow after you. And God, help us to see what you're doing in the world. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. All God's people join me by saying amen. Let's continue in worship. Sanctuary family, thank you so much for joining us today and allowing us to be a part of your week. I, I pray that this service has been a blessing to you. Um, if this is uh, your first time really, really feeling impacted by this message of the love of God, and you would love to continue in conversation to know what that means for your life, please reach out to us. Either drop us a comment below or email us at hello at sanctuarycub.org. One of our pastors would love to be in conversation with you. 
If there is some other way we can be praying for you or supporting you in this season, let us know that as well. We would love to journey alongside with you. Sanctuary, know that we love you. We miss the opportunity of being in person with you, but we're going to keep trusting God uh, for the opportunity to worship in the way that we are, and we will be together in person soon enough. Until then, though, know that the love of God goes with you, that you are not alone, that your brothers and sisters are praying for you and are here with you. Let us know how we might journey together. I want to take a moment and just pray as we end our service today. But know that our worship continues, that our life is an act of worship. So let's take a moment and pray sanctuary. Lord God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace that you pour out on us that allows us to call ourselves no longer enemies of God, but friends of God. God, I pray today for the brother or sister who is watching, who feels, Lord, this message was for me. I pray, God, that you would continue to speak to their hearts. God, I pray for brothers and sisters who are struggling in this season that they might see your goodness in the midst of hard times. And God, I I lift up your good name for all the good things that's happening in this season, for all the things that we're celebrating, for the praise reports we're hearing about, the ways in which you're showing up in people's lives. Lord, we thank you for that as well. Now, Lord, as we continue forward this week, Speak to us through your words. Speak to us through song and all the other ways that you speak to us, God. Allow us to be reminded that you are with us and for us, that we are never alone. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us as faultless before his glorious presence with exceeding joy. To the all-wise God be all glory, honor, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Sanctuary family, would you join me by saying amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and have a great week. We'll see you next week.